The time is now. Foretold long ago. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. A series of prophecies about the coming of Christ as the Messiah, the Anointed One, arise during the reign of King David over Israel. In these prophecies, the kingly and godlike qualities of the coming Christ are revealed. The Lord promises David through the lips of a prophet called Nathan that he will bring into being an eternal kingdom for his son through one of David's own descendants. Chronicles 17, 12 to 13 says, I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. Have you ever been chosen out of the blue for something wonderful? When he was five years old, one of my boys won the main prize at a chocolate party. It was an enormous chocolate bear and he shared it with the whole family for weeks. A year later, he st still talked about that win wistfully. Being chosen for something can be wonderful, but it can also bring huge responsibility. David was identified and then anointed as a future king by the prophet Samuel during the reign of Saul. God was working within time to establish his son's line and he chose David to be a king and a prophet. And as such, David points beyond himself to the higher king and prophet who was to be born, Christ. David was the youngest of a large family of boys belonging to Jesse, who was Boaz's grandson. Despite being the youngest and the smallest, David, the most unlikely candidate from Jesse's sons, was chosen. But he was not able to take the throne immediately. A long road of difficulties and persecutions lay before him. Through various temptations and tests, it was only his trust in God that kept him alive. During that season of suffering, David would pour out his grief to God in inspired psalms. And this worshipful writing continued after King Saul's death when David was crowned and he became the most outstanding king ever to rule Israel. In the course of his life, through the hardships and triumphs, David used the poetic gift he'd been given and frequently prophesied the coming Messiah. He wrote, why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. This prophecy alludes to the attempt by Herod to destroy the newborn Messiah with the killing of the innocents that he commanded after the visit of the Magi. But the psalm goes on, he said to me, you are my son, today I have become your father. God's own son will be born in time. And as David warns, this Messiah, this son, will be the judge of all. Kiss the son, he writes, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. 
In this psalm, the truth is revealed that the Messiah is the Son of God. David writes more about the perfection and divinity of the Messiah in several subsequent psalms. For example, in Psalm 45, David speaks of the coming Messiah saying, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Jesus was going to be born as a man in space, time and history, but he's also God. The coming Messiah would be God with us. This season of Advent is a time of preparing our own hearts for the coming of the Lord, and we do this by reflecting on God's preparing work in history. Long before Jesus came in history, God was working within time, working in the hearts of people and through events, to make the incarnation possible. Why not reflect on how you are being prepared today for serving God through this season of Advent? Let's pray using the words of St. Francis of Assisi. I beg you, Lord, let the fiery, gentle power of your love take possession of my soul and snatch it away from everything under heaven that I may die for love of your love, as you saw fit to die for love of mine.